Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Nanalyze the Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic or Shad, if you're in. We have one more replay for tonight. It's going to be Sparkles versus Google Frog. Sparkles on the rovers. I keep calling them light vehicles, don't I? As is Google Frog. Rover Mirror on Eye of Horus, a map that's pretty good for it, too. I mean, it's actually a map that's pretty good for a lot of factories because of the way the choke points are set up. It's remarkably good for bots just because they can easily maneuver around a bunch of the stuff in a way vehicles can't quite and also can deal with a lot of these cliffs in the way that, or rather, these. Not cliffs, these hills, mountains, ridges! That's the word I'm looking for. These ridges in a way that vehicles can't. So it is a nice little map for a lot of factories, but in this case we are going to see just a standard rover mirror. Not already starting on Google Frog, getting in, scouting a little bit earlier than Sparkles, but still, excuse me, still Sparkles should be able to take out the scouting quickly enough. So Google Frog knows their opponent's going for rovers. They don't really know much else, they don't really know the expansion order, they don't really know anything about... What else is going on? They just know that Sparkles, they started in the center, they have rovers, and that one of those rovers has gone in their base and has been killed. Oh, also that Sparkles is not building as much defenses. That's actually another thing that Google Frog knows. Sparkles only was relying on their commander to defend, doesn't have much else, and Sparkles also going over to the southwest to expand. That is not known by Google Frog, that is just a thing that is happening. Same time, Sparkles just double checking if Google Frog is expanding over to the northeast, and indeed Google Frog is expanding over to the northeast. This, this Scorcher, will it find it? Looks like. Yes, it definitely will. It actually will get to this Mason. Might be able to kill it, too. Not a whole lot of defense coming in here. Google Frog does have radar, but radar shadows are a thing. So even with the radar there, it can't be spotted. But Google Frog, they, I think they spotted the fact that the Scorcher was coming in earlier. The Scorcher just happened to be in radar range before managing to get in. So the Scorcher, not able to deal with this. As Scorcher Darts do be single Scorchers, and that means no harassment for Sparkles. Does get rid of the half-built Metal Extract, but otherwise, no. So the Radar is still doing its job, just a little bit finicky. I mean, that's the thing. I feel like the Scorcher must have come through here just a little bit. If it had gone entirely through here, it probably would have been fine, but it must have come through into the Radar before getting the Radar Shadow. So yeah, that's just a thing to bear in mind. That does happen sometimes. And at this point, though, Sparkles with a much more comprehensive radar coverage and actually a fairly stronger economy too. But while that early harassment did not kill the Mason, it did slow it down. So as a result, Sparkles has managed to get quite a bit ahead since their Mason was not similarly harassed and is just building up with impunity. At this point, Google Frog trying to get some revenge on here, trying to deal with a little bit of some of this over the Southeast. The Dart will be able to come in and deal some damage and probably will be able to at least Kill, maybe kill a metal extractor, slow down the mason a bit. Probably won't kill anything other than the metal extractor, but hey, killing a metal extractor is still good. It's just, damn, stupid weather. Gah. Still good, but it's not great. On the other hand, Sparkles, they've already expanded over to the center of the map. Google Frog's still working on that. The only downside for Sparkles is they don't really have that much in the way of energy or build power for that matter, whereas Google Frog, they aren't worried about that so much. I mean, they are just building up economy, they are behind in that respect. But yeah, Sparkles right now, they actually aren't producing enough to really make it worth it. They, Where's the commander, anyway? Oh, commander's the front. Yeah, so it's not building up. Yeah, see, the thing is, I maybe it's just me. I just usually like to have built a caretaker in my main base before I move the commander out of there. It's usually around the plus 15 metal per second mark. It's a little early, but it does mean you don't excess as much. Which is a problem I have anyway, but that's more because I keep forgetting to build power structures. Yeah, unfortunately, Sparkle's spending a lot of time building up that metal economy, and unfortunately losing that Mason's the entire southeast side of the map can't really be expanded to for another minute and a half or so. The Mason to replace it is being built right now, but the problem is that it's just... It's still losing that southeast. Fortunately, again, for Sparkle's, they are well ahead in terms of economy, but again, they aren't using that to actually make units much. They are now. I mean, that second caretaker is being built up. The first caretaker is already up, and that's fine. It'll be built up in a few seconds. But yeah, that is a risky thing. Also, why having a fusion reactor right here? That is super risky. If that fusion reactor goes, the caretakers go with it. The, the factory is also going to be heavily damaged. But, okay. I mean... I guess if Google Frog gets that far, they've already won. But, ah, that's a, it's a tricky thing. At the same time, though, Google Frog able to wipe out the mason over to the northwest, or center west. Actually, probably get rid of all the stuff in the southwest, too. So, Sparkle's losing a lot of their economic advantage to Google Frog's raiding here. I mean, Sparkle's... I like the way they're approaching him, but unfortunately their expansion was a little bit too naked. 
didn't really do much to defend against it, not realizing, I guess, that Google Frog had not expanded that quickly because the early harassment of Sparkles had slowed things down enough that Google Frog just was not as far into the game as Sparkles must have assumed. Of course, the problem is that this entire time Sparkles has still been accessing, why is there nothing being built in the rover assembly? Repeat build is your friend! Doesn't really matter if you're not building necessarily the best composition. Just, if you need to change compositions, just clear the queue and keep going. But, repeat build is your friend, otherwise you're just accessing metal all the time. I, I don't understand what's going on there. Unless the idea was to build a fusion plant faster. But, yeah, that's not going to happen at this point. Google Frog, as a result, has a massive army advantage. I mean, what is the army value advantage right now? Because Sparks has a metal use advantage, but Google Frog, actually not that hard. Large. Only 100 metal per sec, or 200 metal army advantage. But it will probably get bigger as well, as Google Frog is winning the attrition war. And overall, just making the damage harder for Sparkles to really get around the map. That being said, Sparkles does have a bit of a harassment force going on in the north side of the map to make sure the northwest hasn't been taken, although they, they know the dart's there. But that will be able to stop this mason. If it's timed right, I don't know if that's going to be spotted. It's... No, it won't. And Google Frog does spot that there was something there on radar. That they knew something was coming up. They had radar enough to see it. So the Mason not going to its death, and the rest of these Scorchers coming in to try to help deal with it. Though, three Scorchers and a Dart against a single Scorcher, I think, in this case, Google Frog's going to win just because the Scorchers from Sparkles are way too damaged. But now the Southeast being destroyed again, so Sparkles unfortunately not doing a great job defending their expansions. They're taking expansions fine, they're just not holding on to them. And that's a real shame, because at this point, Sparkles, they really need that. They are rebuilding over to the, south the Southwest, and that's good, as well as reclaiming. That, like, that's... That's all correct. It's just that right now, Sparkles, they're just constantly being hammered on all sides and not really doing much to counter that. Google Frog, they're just running away with their economy right now. Uh, there's nothing that Sparkles is doing that's really getting in the way of Google Frog's economy and not much that can be done. Google Frog doing a great job defending the front lines. Like where their economy primarily is, is being defended. They have Scorches along the side to stop a lot of raiding coming around the sides. This area over here to the east, that's definitely a good juicy target, but that's about it. And even that's not going to be a juicy target for very long. Scorch coming in here. Last shot at making this a juicy target. The Lotus does go down right before it's done. This Mason is dead. Okay, the eastern side of the map. That is at least some progress for Sparkles in trying to deal with Google Frog's economy. Kind of small progress, though, but it's at least something. At the same time, Sparkles is setting up to make sure that their eastern side is re relatively well defended against Scorcher incursions. And should be able to rebuild the southeast quickly enough thanks to these two Masons. But again, why is this not building stuff? Re I, okay, I'm I'm getting... Calm down. Calm down, Dominic. It's not that big of a deal. Well, it is that big of a deal, but it's like... I don't know. I just don't like the fact that Sparkles is relying on their ability to multitask back to the factory. Because they are accessing metal as a result. I mean, they're accessing metal even with that. They just don't have enough caretakers to make use of it. They only have 30 metal per second going in the factory. So they can't actually build up all the things they need to use the metal they have. Regardless of how much they're actually paying attention to the factory, they simply do not have enough caretakers there. Again, it's good to be ahead by one in caretakers. You see, Google Frog, they got, they got 50 metal per second. They have two factories and four caretakers. They got 60 metal per second worth of build power and around 40 to 50 metal per second in terms of income, depending on reclaim. Like, that is how you do it. You want to be, especially at this stage in the game, like I said, one or two caretakers ahead. Otherwise, you excess, or just can't use all the metal to turn to army. And they have to spend it on commander upgrades, they have to spend it on defenses, or it goes to waste. Because again, Sparkles, again, they are ahead in economy, and if they had been spending that on their lo on their levelers, just their factory in general, had gone to come over caretakers, or even just had a worker on repeat build and put it on auto assist, that alone would do a bunch to make sure that this factory was staying in, in a position where it's actually using all the build power, or using all the metal available. But unfortunately, it's not. So, because of that, Google Frog can still kind of go around the side and start really taking care of everything. I mean, these these Scorchers would have been wiped out. If Levelers had come in, and another wave of Levels had come up to deal with these Scorchers, which could have been built had this factory just kept going with construction, then it'd be fine. And if there were more Caretakers or other stuff, or just more build power in the factory. But no, Sparkles, for some reason, I'm not sure why, is not insisting on building more Caretakers, or at least isn't doing it that quickly. Or isn't insisting on having a bunch of workers be built and then auto-assist the factory. 
like either way it would work quite well in fact the worker solution probably would be a bit better in the short term because they need to also have a bunch of workers but even then it's like they need at least two more caretakers at least two more caretakers not just one one's not enough like I said, I don't understand where Spark. What's I would like to know if Sparkles ends up watching the video, if they could, they could put a comment and saying this is what they were thinking. Oh, okay, I mean drones got a better point. Drone in the chat pointing out that Sparkles can't mic can't macro, and primarily just micros. I don't sure if I've really noticed Sparkles being that strong of a micro player either. But yeah, macro is one of those things you kind of have to learn in this game. And it's not too hard. I mean, all you really have to do... Like, there's some things with auto-assist that you can easily do. Repeat build. I mean, all you really have to do is pay attention to this number here. Well, okay, in the... Not here, because this is the spectator view. The actual number is going to be this green number in the middle. But yeah, pay attention to that number. And then, if that number is higher than how many caretakers you have in factories times 10, then... Or if the... If the second digit in the number is higher than the number of caretakers you have, build another caretaker. And I mean caretakers, not caretakers and factors, it's caretakers. So like right now... Actually, that's fine. It's the same number as caretakers. But yeah, it's like... I don't know. Just building more caretakers is not gonna hurt, is my point. And that was the point I made in the first game too, is that building more caretakers, yes, it may not necessarily pay off immediately, but it is only 220 metal, and for the amount it can save you off of excess... It's definitely worth it. Like, but look at the excess here. I mean, 2,850 metal. That... Two extra caretakers early on would have been 440 metal. That would have saved 2,400 metal. Like, it would be very easy for Sparkles to just have enough caretakers to very easily build up the army they needed and not excess at all. But at this point, they've lost their economic advantage. They are trying to rebuild it, getting their factories... Or getting their metal extractors up, but also being extremely timid, putting Stardust in the way, too. Which I think is a little bit overkill at this point for the back lines. Like, Sparkles could just rebuild the Metal Electrodges and then build defenses. They have a front line that's defended enough. But, either way, it's it feels like it's a little too, little too late. Some Reclaim could probably turn this around, but it's going to be a very tough fight. Like, for Sparkles to even have a chance to turn this around, it's going to require... Well, getting their macro back on track. Winning basically every fight with like, his unit composition. Which, admittedly, they're not doing a bad job of and reclaiming basically everything to stay relatively on par. Because Sparkles is basically equal for attrition. They're having a really hard time maintaining their forces, though, just because of that one Thunder... Or not one, actually. There's probably two... It's four Thunderbirds! Okay. <laughs> Way more than I thought. We got four Thunderbirds coming around here, and no anti-air from Sparkles. Again, partly because they don't really have a lot going in their factory to actually build units with. I... I don't know. Like I said, there's stuff you can do with that... Repeat build constructors and auto assist is a great way to make sure that you don't excess. That's honestly my preferred solution. I do try to make caretakers when I can, but mid to late game, once you get to 30, 40 metal per second, having a constructor on repeat build is not a bad idea, and having auto assist on means that those constructors will automatically just burn metal into the factory, and that'll just help speed up production. Although, to be fair, Google Frog is having a similar issue, but they do, they have actually done exactly what I mentioned, except for the building worker on repeat build. So yeah, I mean, more characters coming up for Google Frog, so they should be fine soon enough. But again, if we compare Metal Excess... Actually, Google Frog excessed quite a bit of Metal in the last... <laughs> 1800 Metal it's excessed in the last couple minutes, so never mind. But still, Google Frog was way ahead in terms of economy. They're winning slightly in terms of attrition. They have this Thunderbird that's doing a great job just making sure that Sparkles cannot be secure anywhere they built up. At the same time, though, Sparkles is actually reclaiming up to parity. The problem, of course, is that they don't have the build power in the factories. If they had, like, one more factory and three more caretakers, they'd be fine. But unfortunately, they have neither of those things, and that means that there's no easy way for Sparkles to really take advantage of the reclaim and actually turn that into an army that's going to be able to fight back. And that's a huge shame, because that was a major chance for Sparkles to get back in there, but not enough build power at the factory means not enough of an ability to actually take advantage of that. While at the same time, Google Frog, again, they have... They have enough stuff built up. They have eight caretakers, three factories. It's 110 metal. Per they can go up to 110 income with everything building and be able to avoid excess. Sparkles, they're trapped at 40 right now. We'll be 50 pretty soon once this gunship plants up. But they've got nothing. 
And yeah, it's worth pointing out. Sparkles actually, I believe, was. Okay. Ivan. Wait. Sparkles is number one? Because. Their rating doesn't. Like, they're. If you look at the color there, that's not number one color, but I guess there's some. I mean, the latter. There's some inactivity stuff and some ordering stuff I think might have been an issue that got fixed, so. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. If they were number one, that probably was a bit of a bug. Because if they're number one with probably what looks like super giant rating, and there's still people with neutron star and singularity ratings playing the game, yeah, I don't think so. Still, though, Sparkles, they're holding on pretty well. I mean, for having a massive economic disadvantage and army disadvantage, Sparkles is managing to hold on, but again, those Thunderbirds, just, I'm surprised they haven't really been counted. The crashes are up finally to help get rid of them, but still, there's... Wait, where are they? Wait. Hang on, the crashes did their job! How did I miss that? The crashes actually did do their job. The Thunderbirds are gone, Sparkles has a bit of an opening, but is also at half the economy of Google Frog, and is dealing with the fact that Google Frog is going in the back lines, probably ripping everything apart pretty quickly. Finally, those Sparkles is getting the caretakers they needed, but they needed those caretakers a long time ago. I mean, another 3,000 Metal God excess in the meantime. Those caretakers, that's ah, just too late. At the same time, though, Sparkles is at least providing enough distraction that Google Frog can't easily do much. But Google Frog is certainly trying. Enough levelers, however, the main base for Sparkles means Google Frog cannot get in here and really deal all that much damage. But the problem is, Sparkles is just surrounded on all sides. One good attack from Google Frog from multiple sides would do this. And honestly, if this front force gets destroyed, most of which is Crashers. That's going to be game. And if the force comes in the main base, there's imps already. Wow, seriously, there's a Clickbot factory? Yeah, Clickbot factory is made just as well. So yeah, imps coming in here as well. And that's just going to completely stun out the forces. And the Ravagers can come in and rip them to shreds. Like, this is not going to last long. There's the imps going on. And there's this first stun. Does get rid of one of the crashes. Actually, doesn't do too much. The second imp coming in here stuns out the rest of the, of the rippers and that is going to be it. The raptors coming in here seeing the rippers are done and will get rid of them. With that, there's just a bunch of crashers. They will not be at all a threat. And Sparkles basically having an army left. There's still another set of levelers by the main base. But at this point, Google Frog with strong double economy coming in here with just these glaives can just start ripping everything apart. And the, yes, there are there are defenses. The Stardust can get rid of that. But, played right, these these can just go in here, take care of the caretakers, take care of the... Heck, if they kill the fusion plant again. I said before, the fusion plant will destroy most of the characters if it goes down. Unfortunately, Google Fog not microing this, but still does at least distract some of Sparkles' forces. Again, though, Google Frog way ahead in economy. Like, building from three factories at once, getting all the things they need. Sparkles barely able to maintain construction from one factory, and that is just not going to be enough. I mean, it's valiant effort, but this really came down to the fact that Sparkles did not use the metal they got. They got a lot of metal, they were staying on par with Google Frog on many occasions, but simply did not have the production for it. So, with that, it's going to be the fusion reactor going down, that's going to take care of all the caretakers, and that should be game. The caretakers go down, and yeah, Sparkles just goes, you know what, screw it, I, I can't even. And no, they couldn't, but look at, like, metal produced, even that wasn't that close. But compared to metal used, like, the amount, the amount excessed, 5,000 metal excessed. Considering Sparkles was even on attrition with a 5,000 metal excess? Like, they were way behind an army value the entire time, and they kept attrition quite close. Like, value killed, they were slightly ahead. Army value, they were consistently behind by, well, several thousand metal. Not nearly a factor of two. Had Sparkles decided to build up more caretakers, use the economy they had, like, because again, metal income for first half of the game was not too far off between each other. Had that been done, Sparkles could very well have just taken that. They would have had a much better attrition, they would have had a much larger army, and Google Frog wouldn't have had enough to actually deal with this. Just for how efficiently Sparkles was playing, considering their smaller army. But... Unfortunately, Sparkles did excess. So yeah, that's the big issue right now. It's just build more caretakers. Like, I don't... I get that it's... Okay, so I think I know what's happening. See, when people first start playing 0k, it's really tempting for a lot of people to think that if they build more caretakers or build more workers and put them on assist build, that it's going to magically make that thing build faster. Because once you have enough resources, especially if you're not doing too well at first in managing resources and you end up with a bunch in storage, 
when you start putting that into the factories, it has a massive effect. So you can think, oh, well, I put caretakers down, I use them in the factory, I get a bunch of extra units. And the thing is, you quickly learn that's only true when you have the metal for it. And you sometimes also quickly learn, maybe a bit too quickly, that it is important to be somewhat efficient with what you build. Like, it is important to think about what you build in terms of what you need right now versus what you're going to need later on and try not to focus too much on stuff later on because you might end up not building enough units and then you don't get to defend things and then there never is a later on because your opponent has just won. However, with caretakers, they're only 220 metal. They're not that expensive compared to most units. In fact, they're cheaper than most units. So having one or two of them extra isn't a big deal. And then when you start reclaiming, then you immediately use all that metal. So yeah, sure, they're not being 100% efficient all the time. But the point is that you're never accessing because you have enough that it's not a big... You have enough that if you reclaim, you're still using that metal as you reclaim it. So yeah, I think it just comes down to the fact that newer players think caretakers... You know, often think caretakers are way better than they are. And then there's a bit of a pendulum swing where you realize caretakers are only as useful as your economy. And so you build less of them because you think, oh, well, I don't need caretakers as much. Or you don't remember to build caretakers. And then you end up accessing too much. And the middle ground to me is build, like, one extra caretaker beyond what you need. So whatever, again, the first digit or the second digit, the tens place of, like, divided by ten, what you have. If you have that many caretakers, you're good. Otherwise, add one or two. And then once you get about 40 or 50, make sure you have a worker on repeat build in your queue somewhere and you have auto assist on. The little wrench in the bottom right corner. If this enabled and worker on queue, you'll be fine. You won't lose metal. Now, of course... As you get better at multitasking and paying attention to the entire map, obviously you can build characters more when you need to. But auto assist is still a really safe option. Like it's not going to hurt you any to have it. And building extra workers is not a bad idea either. Just because it means it's easier to rebuild things or easier to push them forward and get a bunch of reclaim. Because pushing... That's the other thing is obviously later on you want to get the reclaim. If you have four or five workers going and getting the reclaim, that's 20, 30 metal per second that you're taking without issue. Like you're just... You probably increased your income by 50% just by having those workers go out there and reclaim. And if you have enough caretakers or workers in your base, well, then you're solid. You can just put that straight into units and you'll be fine. Okay, Wes pointing out the caretakers may cost in 10 minutes. I mean, that's... I guess? Well, 10 build power... I don't see anything that make cost in 10 minutes. Like, you build a caretaker... It costs 220 metal. It increases build power by 10. If you would have excessed and you have a caretaker instead, I would think that would make cost in 22 seconds, not 10 minutes. So I'm not quite sure what you mean, Wes. There, oh, oh, right, 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 sorry. Wesley Boss pointing out that caretakers also have a metal and energy value. And by the metal and energy value, they make cost inside of 10 minutes. That's fair, but I would consider them in terms of making making cost as they make... Not so much making cost, but making sure that the income you have is useful. Because to me, it's either you have 30 metal per second and 10 of it's going to waste, or you have 30 metal per second and none of it's going to waste, and to me, that's worth 10 metal per second. Which is why I'd say, no, they'd make cost in 22 seconds. But, yeah, it depends how you look at it. In terms of production, though, I think, I think in terms of making cost doesn't makes sense but okay if the uh, usually the game's gonna go long enough that whether or not they make cost it doesn't matter they still helps although i think do do workers still have income i can't remember i think they got patched out nope workers still make income too very little but they still have a tiny little bit of metal point one metal and energy each so yeah in review caretakers are good don't worry about building one or two too many compared to what you need and also, if you want, repeat build with masons and auto assist. And also, repeat build's your friend. Don't worry about repeat build. It's better to have units on the field that are halfway decent generalists than to have your metal just escape into the void. Anyway, that is going to be it tonight. So thank you for watching. And until next time, which won't be Monday because I'm actually... I don't really want to get into too much, but basically, I am busy Monday because it is a stat holiday and I'm going visiting friends. So, it's the only day I could.
So yeah, Monday, I might do something in the morning. No guarantees, but, you know, pay attention to the channel or Twitter or whatever. I'll announce it. And again, Wednesday won't have anything. Tuesday will for this week. After that, it'll probably go back to the standard Monday, Wednesday, Saturday schedule. So anyway, that is that. So thank you, thank you all again for watching and have a good night, everyone.